Jen here from Shilling Data Studio, and today I want to share how we're going to extract a table in a PDF into R for analysis. And this is the first time I'm doing this, so I thought I would record and let you follow along in case you ever want to do this too. All right, so this is the PDF that I want to extract this table from, and this is actually the table that I want. I want to get this gender wage ratio and real earnings table from the um, from this report, which is a fact sheet from the Institute for Policy for Women's Policy Research, and it's about the gender wage gap. So I found out that there's this package called Tabulizer, and um, I'm trying to install it right now, but it's not quite working. So I thought it would be useful to share what I'm doing, and maybe that could help somebody else. So I'm going to get into R Studio, and first I'm going to try installing the package. And I'm getting a warning that R Tools is required. And I'm getting a warning that tabularizer is not available for this version of R. So if you get the warning that R tools is required, but not currently installed. All right, so I got this error that R tools was not installed. And so I'm going to the cran.rstudio.com slash bin slash windows, because I've got a windows machine slash R tools. And I've got an updated version of R. So I'm clicking on R tools 4.2. And then I'm going to use the R42, R tools 4.2 installer and it is downloading right now and then i can run that executable so i've now installed our our tools and i have restarted my r studio so when i run the install package it says tabulizer i still don't think this is going to work because i have um it's not available but you can see i no longer get the warning that um our tools is not available so that resolved that issue. So the package tabulizer depends on R Java, which means that you have Java installed on your computer. And there's some information on troubleshooting, which we'll take a look at in a minute. Um, if I go into my R Studio, I can double check that I have R Java installed by going to packages and I can search R Java. And I do have it installed. I actually have two versions of it. Um, I probably don't need to, but um, that's okay for now. I have it installed. But I, if I try and load it, if I try and load library R Java, I'm getting an error um, that I'm having some issues. So I need to take a look at some of the troubleshooting. So there's a recommendation to install Java on Windows with Chocolatey and then install Java and then setting the Java home um, environment variable in R. All right, so I have successfully now installed Java, but I had to do a couple things um, that were not quite the same as what's noted here. So one thing is I had to run my command prompt as an administrator. So to do that, you go down to your, if you're on Windows, you go down to the um, Windows icon, you type key at, CMD, excuse me, CMD into the search, and then you right click and say run as administrator. And then I could run this code, which established um, the chocolatey uh, access. I guess. <laughs> I honestly am not too uh, familiar with um, with this or with um, running things on the command line. I've done it some, but I'm not entirely sure what all of this did, but it set up a, I believe what it did is it installed, well, obviously it installed Chocolatey, but then it also set it so that you can run it by calling CHOC, and then you can install packages from Chocolatey. The other per problem that I had was I tried running this Choco install JDK7 slash or dash Y, and I got some errors. And what I did then is I tried going to the troubleshooting page, but there was a lot here and it was kind of overwhelming. So then I just went to um, the chocolate or community.chocolatey.org and I looked for the packages and I searched for Java and I saw that there's a Java 8 here. And so what I'm thinking is maybe one, well, there's 11, but there were a lot, there were 3 million downloads of the eight and only 440,000 downloads of the 11. So I thought, okay, maybe the 11, the 11 is obviously a newer version, but I don't think I need the latest, greatest Java. Maybe I can just go with eight. And so what I did is I, I basically, I did instead of running this with the JDK seven, I ran it with JDK eight K eight, and then that worked and was successful. And over in my R Studio now, 
Um, when I ran library R Java, you can see that it worked successfully and I didn't get this error. So that's awesome. So now let me try running this install tabulizer again. I'm not sure if this is going to work. I think I'm still going to get the same error that it's not available for this version of R. Um, but because the, the Java problem wasn't that issue, but now I have, um, and now I know Java's working. So back over in the documentation, I can see that I can install it from GitHub. So let's try, I know I'm on Windows 64 bit, so I'm going to try this remotes um, option to install it from GitHub instead of from CRAN. All right, so back in R, I'm going to try this and let's see if this works to run it. All right, looks like we're at least uh, downloading it successfully. It's trying to install it. Okay, installing, installing, looking so far so good. Awesome, okay, so now we should be able to run library tabulizer. And that worked, awesome, okay. So let's see how this works. I'm going to go up to my R code here. And I copied this over from a previous document that I have. So I have some other libraries here in my setup, but I'm going to add library R Java and library tabulizer. We're going to run this whole setup chunk and certainly R Java or R Java and Tabulizer are already in, uh, loaded, but I'm just going to, for the sake of having this so I can run it later, I'm going to run that. All right, so now I need to get my data. I'm going to make a new R chunk called data. And in my files, in my data folder, I have this PDF. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, first I need to pull the PDF in. So I need to set up my file. So PDF file is going to be here, data, comma, get my file name. And I'm not sure if this is going to work because I think I might have to run it for the package, but let's just see. I don't, I don't know. Let's see. So let's call this PDF tables and there's a function called extract tables and we have to give it the file, PDF file. Okay, well it's running, so maybe it will work. In the documentation, they use an example of using system.files and specifying the package as tabulizer. And so that's why I was thinking maybe just using here to get the file path wouldn't work, but it actually did work. And we now have PDF underscore tables, and it gives us a list of all of the tables in the data set, which is pretty cool. Or sorry, gives us a list of all the tables in the PDF, excuse me. Okay, so I don't know exactly which table number um, my data was in. It was in one that had all the years starting with 1960 in it though. And when I look here, I see this five is starts with 1960. And oh, I think actually, ah, interesting. So in the PDF, this table goes over two pages. And so I think this is five and six. So to actually view this, let's just try one. Okay, so this is annual wage table, and I do PDF underscore tables, and then I do two sets of brackets and five, because that's to get the right index. And now I have a list of, oh, there we go, perfect. I got my list of data. Now the one problem is that it has put things in 
like multiple data points in one column. But I can then work on that with, um, I can work on that. This is, but this gets me my data, which is awesome. Okay. And so this is actually the first part of this table. And then the second part of this table is in the sixth index. So let me do this. And actually the other thing that's interesting is these aren't coming through as data frames. They're coming through as just like sets of characters, even though they're showing up here as data frames. Then I take a quick look at the documentation. Ah, okay. Look at this. Let me, let me bring you all over to what I'm seeing. So in the documentation, we have an output as a data frame. So that's what I want to do, because if I'm just doing this, it's going to put them into a matrix and I can also do it as a data frame. Cool, cool, cool. All right, let's copy that. Go back over to our studio and run put that output as data frame. Perfect. Now I could just try and copy and paste this into like Excel or Google Sheets and make my own CSV, but this is really pretty neat. And it um, is going to allow me to make this much easier for myself. Um, and there we go. Look, we got two data frames now. And first we're going to put them together. So we're going to say annual wage table is going to be bind rows of the first one with the second one. So now we have the all of the years. Okay, we do have um, we do have kind of weird column names and we definitely have like three columns of data in one column. Um, but we can fix this by using the separate um, column. And I'm just going to do some renaming, I think, to make my life a little bit easier. So I binded my rows together. Now we're going to rename. And I'm going to set year equal to X. And actually, to make my life even easier, I'm just going to put in the console names annual wage table. Okay, so the first column is X and I'm going to name that year. Um, this is going to be an, the annual earnings column is going to be this column, which really is like a set of three columns, but that's for now I'm going to do that. And weekly earnings is going to equal this column. So I run this. This is binding my rows together again, which is just stacking one on top of the other. And now I am renaming the column names so I can see perfect annual earnings and weekly earnings. Now I'm going to separate out the annual earnings into three columns and the weekly earnings into three columns. To do that, I pipe this into a separate function. First, I have to specify the column I'm going to separate, which is annual earnings. Then I have to specify the columns I'm going to put it into. And so the first column is the median annual earnings for women, then it's median annual earnings for men, and then the women to men earnings ratio. So I'm going to say med annual earnings w, me median annual earnings m, and then w m. Well, I'll say median annual should have made these shorter median annual earnings women to men so running this okay i got a couple problems because it expected three pieces and it had missing pieces so let's see what it did ah okay so it did something very strange i think let me see let's also check with the documentation i think i need to provide I need to, oh, I need to tell how it's, oh, that's right. Okay, I need to tell it how to separate. And it's just picking um, all kinds of things. And so I want to separate it by a space. I forgot that part. Sep space. Okay, again, I had a problem. But this is good. I did get 
the wages separated, but I lost the percent. And, oh, I see one thing, you know what, I can take out, let me drop row one too. So to remove my first row here, I'm going to use slice minus one. And that will just take off the first row, and then I'm going to pipe it into my separate. I'm still going to get the warning because something else is going wrong, but um, this is looking okay so far. So when I run separate now, I'm still getting this problem where I have extra, an extra column here and it's not getting everything. So what I think is happening in my data is that it's actually got two spaces instead of one space. So I'm going to add an extra space into my sep argument and I'm still getting a problem warning and it's not quite going to come out right I think. But um, let's see what happens. So it did get this annual earnings for women and then there must be two spaces and then the annual earnings for men and then just one space and the percent. So if I do two spaces or space, now I'm going to get that separated out properly. And the warning came for 2021 when there's no data. So let's do the same thing for weekly earnings. I'm just going to copy this down, type this in, and we're going to do this. And we're going to say weekly earnings and just change this annual to weekly. Oh, and by the way, to do that highlight, I pressed alt and then on my keyboard and then I dragged across and that lets you select multiple things. So weekly earnings, I'm just going to do the same separated. It looks like that worked because the first four rows don't have it, but let's take a look. Yeah, first four rows don't have it, but now I have this, which is awesome. So the only other remaining problem is that these six columns are being stored as characters and I actually want them to be stored as numbers. So the easiest way to do this, I could do a mutate and parse number on all of them, but I'm actually going to, instead of doing that six times, I'm going to pivot longer, mead annual earnings women to uh, mead weekly earnings W2M. And I'm just, I'm actually not going to do anything else. I'm just going to do that. And it's going to then put into name value combinations, the columns and their values. And then I'm going to pipe that into a mutate statement. And I'm going to say value equals parse underscore number value. And that's going to extract the value out of or the numeric value, excuse me, out of the value column. So now you can see I just have numbers and the dollar sign and percent signs have gone away. And now I'm going to pivot wider. Names from equals name, values from equals value. And that's going to put my data set back out wide again. And I have the median weekly earnings. And now I have this exact table. I think I might end up pivoting it longer again for my visualization I want to do. But for the purposes of getting this table in, we now have this exact table from the PDF in a format that we can work with because we have correct column names, we have the separated out pieces, and everything is a numeric value. So that is how you use the package tabulizer. Well, first of all, how you install the package tabulizer, then how you use the package tabulizer to extract tables out of a PDF file, and then how you can manipulate the data using um, some of the dplyr and tidyr uh, functions to create a data set or a data frame that you can work with. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found that helpful. I certainly learned something new today. I didn't know how to extract a table from a PDF. And so I'm really excited that I learned how to use the tabulizer package today. And then I'm really, I always enjoy kind of manipulating data and processing it so I can use it. And so that is how you do that with the tabulizer package and then with some of the functions from the tidyverse packages. Um, again, I hope you found that helpful. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know if you have any questions and make sure you subscribe for more R videos.